What is going on, comic book familia? It's 2023, and I am here with my first video of the year. I should say we are here because I brought somebody along. I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, I am back or we are back for our very first video of 2023. And I brought along a very good friend of mine. When I first started really getting into Instagram, he's one of the first people I met up with, which is about two or three years ago. And we've been following each other ever since. He's such a good guy. Let me introduce you to Kyle Nurtuin at Marvel 2K21. How's it going, Kyle? Oh man, it, it's 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 going. Uh, like we like we were talking about before, uh, it, these past few years have been it's been crazy. A lot of the things happened where you know the the, the whole world went went uh, awry. But what it did, I think it, it brought a lot of us closer together than we've ever been. Like, I mean, you're on the other side of the country. If if we didn't both start getting into Instagram, we never would have met or even realized we had similar you know yeah. uh, thoughts and 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 desires of, of the comic industry you know it's it's been uh it's been pretty cool <laughs> yeah that's one thing i mean as much as i love comic books they're always been a part of my life meeting people that i would never would have met without social media and instagram has been such a highlight you know i'm i'm constantly meeting new people and the minute we meet a fellow person who's into comic books and you know those types of things it's just like instant bonding like we've been long we've been friends forever it seems like well, and I have to admit, the, the comics community on social media is far different than almost any other fandom I've been I've experienced in my day. Like yeah. the uh, Star Wars on Facebook. I, I was on a big Star Wars page uh, on Facebook many, many years ago doing live shows to 10,000 viewers. Wow. And I decided to leave that uh, that whole uh, page and start my own with a couple other friends. And I ended up getting death threats. Dang. Because, like, legitimately, I still have the screenshots just to remind me. Like, that's how serious it got for some people, you know. So, in the comics community, especially, you know, when I got into it on Instagram, it was the exact opposite. It was like, it, like you said, we it, it's as if we just knew each other forever. And it was immediately, instead of, like, trying to attack or come at each other, we're always trying to support each other more yeah. than anything. And, and it's, it's an experience that I... I I was not used to when it comes to fandoms. I mean, like I said, I, I'm going from from death threats to like, oh, you're you're doing this. Let's talk about how we can help each other. Yeah. What? <laughs> like that's just not how how it was for the majority of of the other fandoms I've been in. So the comics one has been just just a, a breath of fresh air. Like I said, the minute we met, which has been at least two three years now, I, I just I go, this is a good guy. I mean, I could tell the way you talk, the way you, when you show stuff on Instagram, on your YouTube channel, because he's a good guy. And we just bonded ever since then, you know, so, which is good. So before we start getting into talking a little bit about more you and our topic, oh, by the way, our topic is Mount Rushmore of comic book writers. So we each pick four writers from the modern age of comics. But before we get into that, I got some quick questions. I always ask everybody who comes on my channel for the first time. You ready? Yes, let's okay, go. Okay, Marvel or DC? Neither indie. Oh, that was my second part. Or indie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is an easy one. Yeah. Okay. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars all day. Okay. Superman versus Hulk. Uh well, I prefer the Hulk, but in a battle, Superman wins. Yeah. What about uh Wonder Woman versus Captain Marvel? That's an interesting one. Um I don't know how well at absorbing powers her um, one woman's bracelets are. Mm -hmm. And that would be the determining factor. If she can deflect and, and maybe even send back those, those photon beams at Carol, I, I I'm going to give the slight edge to Carol only because of her, her powers are yeah. like, like actual powers, not just being an amazing athlete and can fly, you know, super strength. Like this is like, she could shoot photons at you. So like that, I'd have to give the slight edge to, to, Captain Marvel in that one. Okay, I don't think anybody's ever asked you this question before. Zatanna versus Scarlet Witch. <laughs> this is another one of those where I prefer Zatanna. Yeah. And her power level is ungodly. But Scarlet Witch wins that. What about Batman versus Moon Knight? 
Um, well, Batman would definitely win, um, but it would be one of the hardest fought battles he's ever had because of how much pain Moon Knight can take yeah. um, and keep going. So that yeah. would be that honestly for me is a dream matchup that if they ever do a Marvel crossover, Marvel DC crossover again, if that is not done, then they better. They just don't even release it. Don't even release it. Yeah. Moon Knight was the three personalities. That'd be kind of hard to beat. You know? <laughs> yes. Oh my God. I would, I would, that, I would pay so much good money to see that. <laughs> okay, I'm not, I don't know if you're integrated comic books, but do you prefer CGC or CBCS? Uh, well, so I haven't actually submitted my own graded comics yet. So like, I, I don't have that kind of experience, but in it, and I also don't, I, I don't really have too many slabs only because almost my, enti- almost my entire collection is up for sale at some point, you know, so we always get recycling and then, so I don't do well selling graded comics, so I tend to shy away from them. But if I had to choose, it'd be CGC, even though they're a very, um, let's just say, not morally green um, <laughs> a company at this point. Uh, but yeah, we talk about holding value and what the <laughs> people consider the industry standard. It's CGC. Yeah. Okay, a couple more questions. Favorite comic book character? Favorite comic book character is going to be Wolverine. Um, I, I'm, I'm a short, hairy dude who smokes. I mean, that, that's been my favorite character since I was a kid. <laughs> um, I mean the, the, the short guy that, that gets the girl. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> okay. Next question. Favorite comic book storyline ever. Uh, the Marvel civil war. Wow. Good choice. Mine would be, um, what brought me into the uh, crossover events was the back in the seventies, the Avengers defenders war when they fought each other. That brought out that that's what first grabbed my attention. Okay, one more question. You know, so for me, the, the the Civil War though, the reason why that's so high, so much higher than everything else is because it's what brought me back into comics because I was mm-hmm. out of comics for for about a decade. Wow! And then I saw those on the shelf and was like, oh! And so that storyline is just so important to me that yeah. it's by far my favorite. Yeah, that's a good storyline. One last question: If you could meet up with any comic book creator past or present what would it be and why well so the obvious answer is stan lee because i never got to meet stan lee yeah. uh, he he meant so much to so many of us without even meeting us or knowing who we are what he did in the comics uh you know you can talk forever of the good and the bad that every historical figure has done but <clears throat> he has affected so many lives on so many levels that I, I would, that's the, one of the few people that I regret to this day that I didn't get to meet him. I've met Stanley a couple of times. Um, once back, like in 1993 or four at San Diego comic con, I took a picture. I always show that picture. And uh, the person I would have liked to have met and I met him kind of was Jack Kirby. When I mm. used to live in San Francisco, um, I was a teenager back in the seventies and I went to this convention in a hotel, just a bunch of, you know, people just selling comic books and I was outside and about 10 or 15 feet away from me, I, I turned and I looked at this person and he was smoking a cigar and it was Jack Kirby. And I was a teenager oh, and awesome. I was just too nervous and awestruck to go up to him and just say, hi, I regret that to this day. You know, there was no cell phones obviously back then. Right. But I, would, I just stared at him with my mouth open and I just walked away. I go, dang it. You know, I would have just, I heard afterwards he was such a nice person to talk to, you know, so. Yeah, you know, I I got lucky. Um, he's not a comic creator, but like uh, Kevin Conroy was one that okay. I luckily met this year. Like I went to Mega, uh, uh, Megacon in Orlando and he was one of the only celebrities that I actually waited in line to go see i I do a mark hamill joker voice so to to be able to walk up to him and be like hello batman (laughs) was something that i had to experience and thankfully i did and he i i now have a a kevin conroy approved hamill joker so i i can honestly die happy at this point uh, because of that and that's you know one thing that the pandemic did do also also made me start going to conventions Mm -hmm. because once it came back, I was like, I'm not missing this again. I've been, I'm 35 years old and haven't been to a convention. Like my first convention was last year. Wow. You know, so I, a a lot of things that we, where we talked about the the, the pandemic, it literally just sparked a lot in a lot of us creative types and a lot of creative people. Like, you know what? 
I've got the time and the place. Let's do this. And that that's kind of how it went. <laughs> okay. So you took, I was going to ask you for one request and you kind of did it already. Do your Joker voice once again. That's what really drew me to you. I went, oh my God, this is excellent. All right, hold on. Why, hello, Passpoint Comics. <laughs> How are you doing today? <laughs> I wish Mark Hamill a happy birthday with this voice, and he didn't respond, and I'm very hurt. I'm going to try again this year. Maybe he responds. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I, I, that's, you know, I when it comes to voices, I, I do uh, quite a few, um, yeah. but that's probably the one I'm probably the proudest of. Yeah. So before we go into our picks for riders, talk a little bit more about yourself and what you've been up to recently. Okay. Uh, so I run multiple um, Instagram accounts like Marvel 2K21, you know, Nerdpool Reborn. Uh, but I also sell comic books. So I've been helping the uh, Drip Shop Live grow their uh, comic book division. Uh, that has been very – like. It, to go from selling on a platform that initially gave me everything in the world and then just pulled it out from underneath me to get these people drip who have been nothing but honest and amazing. It, it, that has sparked a new joy and the success I've had with them has permitted me to do things like get my first exclusive. I have a good boy volume three, number one by Ivan Tao. I mean, if we would have talked about, uh, modern comic artists that are on the on the mount rushmore tau would be on mine um we talk about cover artists and so to have an exclusive from him is just mind-blowing and it also has allowed me to fund um my first comic uh i've been writing a novel for about 10 years and just gave up i was like i don't want to do this anymore i was at like forty thousand words or something like that i was like i I'm, I'm done i don't feel like doing this anymore and then i interviewed um a comic book creator uh jason douglas who wrote uh parallel which is uh a ringo nominated um indie book from last year um well, a couple years ago at this point i don't it all blurs into one um and he decided to write his own book after being a fan of comics his whole life and i was like you know what i'm gonna adapt this so i took all that all the writing and all the research that i had done for that novel and now reformed it into a comic book um and as of right now my ash can script is in with my artist and i i <laughs> the i i don't have any kids so i'm guessing it's a similar feeling like <laughs> I, I wrote these words and then this amazing artist martin i'm always i always butcher his last name did genosis i think it is he's on instagram i'm sure he's the black and white artist I'm, I'm sure you follow him on instagram um he I'll give him my words and he just sends back better than I could have even imagined in my head. And I, I it's, it's been an absolute joy and pleasure to work with someone on the same wavelength. Like he's like, we're right here. Like I'll say something. He was like, I was just thinking that I was like, okay, cool. Awesome. Like it, it's, it's, it's a strange cohesion that I'm not used to, uh, yeah. to be entirely honest, but it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never be as talented uh, like you doing writing my own storyline, but that must be just an awesome feeling when this book finally gets out there. Now I'm going to promote it obviously on my Instagram page. You got to send me all the information. Oh, was, I, you well, once, once me, I get the good. Oh, sorry. You did send me a message one time asking for my opinion. And I was like flattered that you even thought about me. I went, wow, man. I was like, dang, thank you yeah, so much. Yeah. You, know? you, you were like, I have a very small group of people that, their opinion to me is worth more than any focus group worth more than a million other people, because there are certain people who I feel have like the, who are the comic community, whether or not they're famous, whether or not they're making the yeah. most money, what, whatever the case would be the true heartbeat of the comics community. That's who I reach out to when I have those. I'm like, I need someone to answer this question. I'm going to go to those people. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, like you said, once you I, I started watching your content, I'm like, this guy's this is a great dude right here. Like, yeah. I would his opinion would matter more to me than say an executive at Marvel. Like, oh well, we we're not gonna put anything like this out. Well, I don't care what you think. I'll put it out myself. Like, I know there are people who'll be interested in the content, and one of your and we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to the Mount Rushmore. One of your uh, top uh, Mount Rushmore is a very big inspiration to me. Um, nice. and we'll get to that when we, we, we talk about your, the Mount Rushmore, but it, it's, 
yeah, to to see the you know my scripts and being kind of ignorant to the whole process. Like I'm going at this with what I've been told from other creators. Like I I have no experience in the comics industry and in, in making comics. I just know people who can print it who can draw it and who can get it out that's as far as i got and i'm just running and yeah. as fast as i can uh once once the kickstart once the um the ash can's done i'm gonna launch the kickstarter uh and then we'll go from there because the first issue i plan to have it be a giant sized like 50 page issue is what yeah. i'm shooting for the most important thing kyle is that you have a passion for this you know and it, i'm sure it's going to show so but before we go any further, I'm going to put all his links in the description below. But we got together today because I started this last year, Mount Rushmore of Comics. I've been picking different topics and Kyle reached out to me. He wanted to do one with me and hopefully more than just one. You know, you're yes. welcome back oh, yeah. anytime. But <laughs> we're, let's get started with that. Let me bring up the uh, slides here. Okay, so this is modern comic book writers. Now, modern, God, there's nothing modern about 1975, basically, but that's where it started. So we could choose anything from 1975 to the present and well, 85. Oh, 85, sorry, 85 to the 85. present. And because <laughs> I know if, if we didn't correct that, someone's gonna be like, oh, they said 75. Yeah, 85, my bad. <laughs> so you're up first. All right, so for me, um, if we're talking modern. This is probably going to be the one that is the most, like, what people would think as true modern. Because, like you said, 85, that's that's quite some time ago. That's before I was born, only a few years. But, you know, <laughs> so I, I definitely know I'm vintage. So I feel like some people would be like, 88 is is a little early. But that's what the like, comic community, or I'm not, even, I'm not even sure who even decided that, but 88 is is the early part. Now, Tinian here, or Tinian, as far as I'm, I've, yeah. been I've been told, um, he is known for, you know, Batman, Detective Comics, Justice League, so he's done a lot of DC work, including the Joker, but then what he also did was he revolutionized the horror comics industry, in my opinion, um, with Something that's Killing the Children, Department of Truth, House of Slaughter, uh, uh, Last House on the Lake, Nice House on the Lake, sorry. Because um, these are not conventional, what a lot of people think is comic books. And, you know, it's funny that Jason, who I brought up earlier, lost his Ringo Award to uh, <laughs> Tinyan for Batman. So, <laughs> um, but what he's done, and he's taken the comics and literally, like, so you got, like, horror true horror then you have like a, a conspiracy theory show like you can see all of these in my opinion being optioned and that's tinian's right tinian's writing like when he writes things it just is like a movie a and when we talked about mount rushmore i went more for who i think is more influential but this one is one of the ones for me that is both because yep. i love his writing i have not found a single comic of his that I haven't absolutely loved. I mean, like, and, and he just continues to produce great titles again and again. I mean, he gave us Batman versus Ninja Turtles. I mean, uh, what, what, what more do you really want as a <laughs> comics fan? I mean, <laughs> like then, and, and, you know, punchline clown. Hunt, he, he added a lot to the Batman mythos along the way. Um, hell, he's only, he's only the second person ever to have a Joker story, you know, like a true, the Joker, um, and I think that speaks volumes with um, how much he's trusted and also with how he's broken away now and on doing his own thing with the tiny onion club and his sub stack trying again, trend setting what might be the future of, of comics because it's all digital. That might be where the, the road is heading. I, I don't want it to be that way because, you know, I love, you know, physical collecting as well, but. I mean, you can't argue with with the science and the and the math there. I mean, it's just so much cheaper. So I can see the industry leaning towards that way. It's already kind of leaning that way, but I can see it going even more so in the next 10, 15 years. Just to let everybody know, when I told Kyle to send me his four, I didn't tell him my four. And I also picked James Tinney in the four. The first time I, I noticed him, you know, really wasn't something that's killing the children. When this book came out and pre-orders, I go, this book is going to be hot. And then from then, I started following him more and more, the Department of Truth, Nice House on the Lake. I go, this guy is just, man, his skills are writing. I mean, I'm sure it must, it just comes so, it seems like it comes so easily to him. And he just, he has yeah. great storylines well, and everything. <laughs> Kyle you know, said, it's, I it's, agree 100%. It's really funny because um, 
I'm one of the founding members of the uh, Tiny Onion Club. Like I'm like he announced that he was doing this. I supported him for the highest level he asked for within 48 hours wow. because I just I said, no, this guy, he he wants my support to do his own thing. I am so in. Yes. Um, and on the what it is, he actually comes on there and talks about it, about his writing and, and how stressful it is sometimes. And, and like, as you said, it, 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 it seems like it's so easy to him. And these kind of titles from what he has said are. Like when he's trying to write, that's why he stopped writing Batman and the Joker because he was tired of having to conform to the the you know the the overall story. He created things like these are all like n- new titles that he birthed yeah. out of it into existence, and that you don't see too much except for on indies. And that's yeah. why it, I, I'm an indie guy. The art, the the writing is always better in my opinion at this point because they have to be. Yeah. Because it's not like you just throw another Spider-Man title and someone's going to go, oh, look, a new Spider-Man. I'm going to grab that. No, something is killing the children. I mean, if you look at that at just the face value, that could scare away a lot of people. Yeah. For so sure. for that I book to be so amazing and so widely loved shows how good it is. Uh, I say within the last five to ten years myself, I have been leaning more towards indie books because they're fresh and they're new. And there's no continuity that you have to follow. You can, just, it's a blank slate. And that's what I like about indie books. Yep. All right. I'm up next. And I picked Robert Kirkman. Um, the main reason I picked him, obviously, was because of The Walking Dead. You know, this book, I mean, when it came out, it's been about 15 years when it first came out. And it just took mm-hmm. the world by storm. And then the move in the TV show. Um, that's why I picked it. He was a great writer. And then I re- started reading Invincible and Oblivion Song and most recently Firepower. I just like the way he writes. And I've seen him a couple of times at comic book conventions. He's a very easygoing guy. And um, I mean, it's, I just became such a fan of The Walking Dead when it first came out. So that's the main reason I picked him. And, and I, I completely agree with you about The Walking Dead. He when we talk about Mount Rushmore, what did he do? He brought back the zombie genre yep. because it had been oversaturated and everyone hated it. And then the walking dead sparked everything again. And I, I of course, as someone who <laughs> I, I'm writing a, a zombie yeah. slash infected storyline, he's an obvious uh, pick for me as inspiration. And, and you can't talk about zombie zombie lore anymore without mentioning him. And that yeah. is, definitely uh something to 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 noteworthy as well i mean invincible is just fantastic i mean yeah. invincible is like and what what it is about him i think that sets him apart is he can go into genres and do his own thing and it be a completely original and yet the very much feel the same way like invincible for instance he jumped into the superhero genre and did it his own way brutally and, and and you know and all of that which you know you don't really see much in in standard superhero content and I, that's why he's yeah he's definitely up there as one of those people that you're just like, like man he can he can do no wrong like what have you have you read a, a kirkham book you didn't like because i haven't <laughs> no. i what i like about his books it's a lot character driven i mean in the walking yeah. dead besides the zombies you've got really to care about these characters you know yes all right, you're up next. All right, so I went with Jonathan Hickman. He's known for you know Secret Wars, he's did a run on Fantastic Four, a lot of the Ultimate Comics, Avengers vs. X Men, and Secret Wars, and the current X Men. And the reason why I felt he deserved to be on the Mount Rushmore is a lot of what he did and is continuing to do it is completely changing the mythos of these iconic characters, you know, like the fantastic four, he introduced the council of reeds, uh, you know, and he also introduced the, or like Bashenga, you know, he helped introduce one of the early black Panthers and what he did with the X-Men and, and the, the retooling of the origin of Moria McTaggart basically yeah. redid. Oh, like it almost recontextualizes all of the X-Men, you know, I mean, you, you can't talk about it without that. And then of course, I'm a big fan of, the most recent Secret Wars, uh, 2015, with with Doctor with a uh, um, God Emperor Doom. I mean, yes. when he when he went up to Thanos and just ripped that man's spine out like so cold. I remember reading that going, "Oh, 
no. <laughs> and if you can get my reaction like that from a comic book, especially like a superhero, because most again, like we were talking about earlier, the, the superhero stuff isn't usually that brutal. Like in most cases, like they'll have it one or two issues, but God Emperor Doom, he took the, the Human Torch and turned him into the sun. Yeah. Like I mean, this man was savage from the start of Secret Wars till the end. And I, I, you know, you can't talk about the current run of comics without mentioning Hickman. He, he's just so vital to the current, like, core of where the the X Men, the 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 Fantastic Four, a lot of these mainline story characters are all set up because of him. Yep, we talked about indie books, how it's basically a clean slate. In some ways, doing books like the X-Men and Secret Wars, I mean, they have he has to pitch it to Marvel first and they have to give their okay. I mean, sometimes that in that way, it may be even harder, you know, but these are characters yes. that are well-established and he's doing basically a 180 on these characters, you know, no, totally like your reaction, you know, with Dr. Doom, you know, Emperor Doom, that that's awesome pick, man. Great pick. And, you know, the other thing about, um, you got to look at it this way. Marvel trusted him yes. to do the Secret Wars. I mean, that is one of the most iconic things that Marvel does is the Secret Wars. And they gave him the right to write it. And he, I mean, honestly, it's my favorite of all the Secret Wars. You know, yeah. the first one's obviously the most iconic with the, you know, black suit Spider-Man and all that. But if you're talking about quality, 2015 is the best Secret Wars by far. Great choice. I'm up next. And I picked Mark Millar. Um, he did the Authority, Ultimate X Men, Superman, Red Sun, Civil War, uh, mm -hmm. Kick Ass, which is like one of my favorite books, uh, Kingsman, and Jupiter's Legacy. The main reason was because I picked them was because of Civil War and Kick Ass. I mean, those are just two classic books. Kick Ass, man, it's just like a normal person. It would be me and you just wanted to become a superhero, yep. basically, you know? And, and, and what, what more do you, again, we were talking, yeah. what more do you want? It's kind of like the Batman versus Ninja Turtles. What more do you want as a normal person putting yeah. on a suit and deciding, I'm going to be Kick Ass and I'm going to yeah. kick some, like, yeah. and just do it. Like, yeah. no, and, and I definitely agree with this pick. I mean, obviously, like we were talking about Civil War is, not only quality wise, but one of my all time favorite because it brought me back into comics and then kick ass. Great. And I even love both those films, even though the second one was, you know, eh. yeah, but the first one was just so well done and Jupiter's legacy. I will never, and I say this loud and never forgive Netflix for ending it after one season. It, I thought that was one of the most refreshing and most amazing TV shows and superhero genre that they had that anyone put out in a long time. And them to go, nah, we're done after one season. We're Netflix. You know what? Don't make me come over there, Netflix. <laughs> yeah, again, I mean, it's a great story, indie story that had so much potential. And they were just like, ah, eh, one season's good enough. Bye. Yeah. That was a shame, but kick ass with this little girl could just cause so much havoc and just the bloodiness of it all. <laughs> you know, I was like, yes. I'm I'll admit that's what drew me to the to this book too, man. And kick ass, he was just like a normal guy. He was, you know, out of his league for sure. And he did the best he could, you know. But I really enjoyed this book a lot and the movie, the first one. Second one was okay. And of yeah, course, it was, it was War. okay. Yeah, Civil War yeah. was just a classic book. I mean, I was like, oh my God. This, and you know, they made a movie out of it. So, you know, that's how good it was. And, and it was really crazy. I remember picking it. It was actually, it was the Wolverine issue where he um, uh, ran up on Nitro and he blew up. That issue was oh, the okay. first one I picked up. And I remember going, if they ever made this into a movie, it would be <laughs> the greatest movie of all time. Yeah. And of course they didn't have the X-Men at the time of the Civil yeah. War One, but I've been saying, they're setting up Civil War II. If you look really closely in the oh. MCU, there's literally two versions of almost every one of the big hitters now. If you yeah. haven't noticed, <laughs> like, it's yeah. setting it up beautifully. And then that's when they'll introduce Miles. <laughs> All right, you're up next. All right. So if we're talking modern comics, yeah. My, uh, Brian Michael Bendis cannot be left out. I mean, we were just talking, my uh, perfect segue. This guy is the one who created Miles Morales, uh, yep. the House of M, Secret War, another version of Secret Wars, uh, the new Avengers, which led to the Illuminati, Age of Ultron, created Jessica Jones. I mean, you just go down the list, Quake, uh, um, 
uh, the you know had a run on the Moon Knight, Guardians of the Galaxy, Uncanny X Men, Riri Williams. I mean, you just go down the list of all the these big. The, I mean, House of M altered the Marvel universe for a good while. Like yeah. that was the that was the universe. I mean, the things that he was able to accomplish, and and he doesn't have he doesn't have this fifty year career. Uh, he jam packed a lot of these great things into a short period of time. Marvel trusted him to handle the first meeting of Miles Morales and the first battle of Miles Morales with Peter Parker. That should speak volumes because Marvel put a lot of eggs in the Miles basket. They were right to do so. Great character. But they, I mean, especially at the time, oh, my God, there's a, a black Spider-Man. Oh ah! Like, like that, that was risky at the time. That wasn't a, like, it wasn't, like, something that, you know, people would talk about woke or whatever. When when Miles was created, he, that, that wasn't something that a lot of companies were, were striving to do, you know. Like, Marvel put their neck out and, really did well with this character and i mean he it seems if you look at a lot of his work too seems like he was pushing the empowerment of of women and minorities and that is very much stan lee-esque because that's what stan lee did and i i I feel like he definitely needs to be on that mount rushmore um it's it's and i that's what this is one of the ones that like i if he's not on there then I'm gonna I might question the list a little bit. <laughs> like, like, are you sure you want to not leave, leave Ben this out? You sure? I mean, I don't know if that's the wise decision, but okay. <laughs> well, now I mean Miles was now the Spider-Man for the next generation. That's who they that's who they relate more to Spider-Man, Miles Morales and Peter Parker, you know. So yeah. great choice. I mean, I and I, when I was a kid, I didn't really vibe with Peter Parker that much. That yeah. wasn't really I didn't like Spider-Man as a kid, but I love Miles. Yeah. Like Miles, and I don't know if it's because I grew up with Static Shock as a kid, and he kind of like the, the cartoon, and it kind of gives me a Static Shock vibe. You know, like this this like kind of young kid who who's thrust with all this power, and then makes a lot of mistakes along the way because he's trying to be something. He like trying to live up to some potential that he's gonna not only surpass, but doesn't even need to live up to. Yeah. And then once he realizes that, becomes like and. and Cause you know, early in the run, he didn't, even, he wore the Spider-Man suit and he was calling himself Spider-Man, but he didn't feel like Spider-Man, you know? And, and I, I love the arc that he's taken to get there, you know, where now, as you said, he is the future of Spider-Man yep. period. And, and that is, and if we're talking Mount Rushmore, uh, accomplished things, that's something that, uh, yeah, you can't leave out. I, I kind of wish he did not go to DC comics um, because I, I haven't kept much track of his career when he went to DC, you know, sometimes I wish he would have gone back to, he could go back to Marvel, maybe sometime in the future, you know, continue writing. You know, so he, I, I've read a few of them, um, like the, the, his new Joker run, I mean, not Joker, uh, Justice League run. Uh-huh. Um, I, you know, I don't like a lot of the super powered like characters and yeah. he made me care, like in the Justice League that I was reading, he made me interested in like Black Adam. Like I didn't care about Black Adam. Even I, the movie did, wasn't going to do anything for me. Like I, I, I watched it. It's not too bad. But um, comic wise, it, it was a whatever character for me. Like, I didn't buy it. wasn't anything. And he made me want to read more Black Adam. So <laughs> the little experience that I've seen with him on DC, I mean, a talented writer can can do anything. And I hope they if if they maybe give Bendis the reins and let him do what he did for Marvel. Yeah. You know, maybe maybe he is the right guy to be over at DC because the only th- the best thing for the industry, and I hate to say this, is for Marvel and DC to be selling well. Yep. Because if they're selling well, there's more people buying comic books, and that means there's more room for indies to grow as well. And maybe we won't see as many indie companies falling by the wayside um, if Marvel and DC were selling more. That's I, that's I, the unfortunate truth about it. Speaking of Marvel and DC, before we get to our last pick, and we both picked the same person, I would love to see another Marvel DC crossover event. If it's yes, you know, oh, do we, it well. we talk about this before. Yeah. Oh my God! If they don't do Batman vs Moon Knight, then it doesn't deserve <laughs> to come out. Yeah. Okay. Like because they're very matched in the in you know in the fighting prowess and all that, but Batman is good at uh, one thing more than anything, and that's dishing out punishment and. 
Moon Knight is better at one thing more than anything, and that's taking punishment. Yep. So I would absolutely, I, I there would there wouldn't be enough money. Like all I can see in my head is that Fry meme: "Take my money, take my money." Yes, like exactly. that. That's that's all it would be. <laughs> For sure. Keep your fingers crossed. All right. So I know. our last pick, and I said ours because we picked the same writer, and he is Chris Claremont. Wolverine, Uncanny, Uncanny X Men, The New Mutants, and X Men, among others. So I'll let you go first. So, and now this is the reason why Chris Claremont is the obvious pick for for the the head, the top of Mount Rushmore, yeah. is because we talk about modern. It's eighty five to current, and what came out in nineteen eighty eight, Wolverine number one, which yeah. was the first solo Wolverine series redefine the character and we, when we talk about a mount rushmore it's not about who we like as much who not even necessarily who's the best writer yeah. it's who is the most influential and is the, if when you talk because like mount rushmore it's not necessarily the, the four best presidents it's arguably yeah. the four most important presidents yeah. um and then when you look at wolverine man i mean a, you know madripoor and all these things that he added to the mythos it not only was new stuff that he was introducing, but it was stuff that was retconned and made to be part of the long-standing canon. And that is what is the most influential thing. And then when obviously he helped with the Uncanny X-Men, but he also was a vocal a, a feature point in the relaunch of the 90s X-Men, which so many collectors nowadays grew up on. So yeah. you and like I, as a kid, I didn't pay attention to the, the writers. I didn't know who was writing these books. I didn't care. It was the characters that I was buying it for. So looking back now, all, all of my favorite comics growing up were basically Claremont. I yeah. mean, if you Wolverine and the X-Men, that's that's where I was able to because like I said, I don't, I don't like the ones who have all this amazing power. Well, there's no struggle there. But with the X-Men and the allegory to it being basically the uh, civil rights movement, you know, and, and them always being hated just for what they are, it, it spoke to me, you know, and, and it, it, even those superpowered beings were OK for me because they had a clear struggle. And you're looking at that, you go, OK, they literally can't like Beast, for instance. I mean, I didn't. Rem I don't remember Beast as the original one with the big feet and the you know, like that. I always knew him as the blue one. He can't walk in the streets without people looking at him weird, yeah. you know. And and he's one of the most intelligent, well spoken. Like you talk about like people who you would be afraid of. Yeah, sure, he can you know throw you through a wall, but he walks up in a suit nine times out of ten. It's like, good evening, madam. How are you today? Like yeah. you're like, <laughs> and you're like, so you, you want to talk about someone who like. The, the the vibe they give off i mean now obviously he's evil from what i've heard i haven't i'm yeah. not i'm on i am so uh, embarrassed to say that i'm so far behind in my reading so i'm that's what i'm hearing but for the most part of his you know his canon he was this well-spoken good guy that always wanted peace and wanted to you know equality and rights and all this great things who were terrified of him because he looked like this big blue monster walking down the sidewalk you know and and that's stuff like that just it's part of comics you know you're, it's just so vital you're right about the beast i've been reading x-men and he he's seems like he's left his humanity behind i mean he's more scientific he reminds me more and more of dark beast from age of Ap apocalypse that's you what know? i've been hearing and that's i'm like oh i gotta catch up because that yeah. sounds like that i love those storylines like the, yeah. the the dark like dark avengers that's one of my favorite like storylines ever when you have you know uh the iron patriot norman osborne that yeah. means, like I love like stories like that. And that's civil war. A lot of that happened you know, with the Thunderbolts and the, a lot of things that were really, really, you know, almost out there. Um, and, you know, I like those kind of stories and, and we talk about people who left long lasting, you know, um, standing in the comics. Yeah. Canon as it is. Claremont, I actually did get to meet him this year too. He he literally is one of the nicest guys ever. Yeah. He sat there and talked to me for about 30 minutes while there was a line of people. And like I I'm so like I was recording him the whole time. He gave me like the scoop of the century and then realized I was recording was like, "Can you not post that?" I was like, "Uh, fine." <laughs> <laughs> I 
quotes because I'm respectful, but no, oh, like because he was telling me about a, a canceled um, storyline that he was writing that they oh. Marvel was like, no, we're gonna done here. We're gonna reset it and do this. And what he was telling me was so much better than what was released. And I was like, oh damn it, I can't, I can't post it. He asked me not to. <laughs> <laughs> what it hurts, but yeah, they go ahead. Me? No, go ahead. And yeah, it was uh he was just so nice and he just signed like I think he even like gave me a deal because I had like five books and like he was only supposed to do two, and I was like, any way you could do like it was literally uh Wolverine eight oh was eight, the one with uh the blue cover with Joe Fix It. Okay. It was the first battle between Wolverine and Sabretooth in his comic. Um what was the other two? Uh oh, Kitty Pride and Wolverine number one uh there's one there's a couple more that i had him sign but yeah those are the big ones like those are some of the most prized pieces in my collection that uh, unless someone wants to offer me like twice the value yeah. i'll just go buy another one you know that that's the case but it means so much to me and, and meeting some of these people that again like i said same, same thing with stan lee they didn't know me but they meant so much and they gave me so much. Yes. So that's something that like, again, we talk about Mount Rushmore Claremont's up there. He's got to be, there's no question. I mean, he set the standard for the X-Men for generation to come. Mm -hmm. I mean, when the yep. uncanny X-Men first came out, um, I was more drawn. I won't lie to John Burns artwork. When I seen the covers like these, you know, like the one in the middle, but his storylines is what captivated me and i just couldn't wait for every comp to come out every month and then he went on to wolverine and yeah he set the standard for generations to come regarding the x-men and mutants overall you know great choices yes yeah and and i just want to add uh when we get wolverine back in the mcu after hugh jack was done with his last appearance we need to get a short wolverine that yes. that's just something that <laughs> I, I, yeah. I i that it, people talk about like hills you'll die on that's my hill Hashtag yeah. make Wolverine short again. Yeah, at least five foot five, <laughs> five foot six, somewhere around there, you know. Yes, mm. yes. I mean, I don't get me wrong. I know dang well we're not getting a five foot three Wolverine. I'm very much aware of that. Yeah. But yeah. five five anywhere between five five and five nine, yeah, that really somewhere will set the difference because they will be significantly yeah. shorter than the majority of the MCU actors. Yeah. Uh so as long as he's short, I mean, of course, I want him shorter as possible, but I'll settle for just someone who has to look up. Like if he got to look up to, to, to the Hulk, I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the Hulk should literally be like over his head, looking up at him. Like that should be how it is. But yeah, so, that's, you know, yeah. when you talk about the, the, you know, the best or the Mount Rushmore Claremont's one of those few that I think is not only the best, but mo one of the, the most influential and one of my favorite. I almost picked somebody else, but I held back. Uh, I don't know if you heard of the writer Rodney Barnes. He's done Philadelphia, and um, okay, I, I see. I have read Philadelphia. That is yeah. awesome. And see, we were talking about modern. My first thought was yeah. two of my favorite indie writers who are a team: Garrett Gunn and uh, Doctor Christy Blanche. Because yeah. there is not a book they put out. Good Boy, Christmas Caroline. Uh, post uh, postmaster. I mean, everything they put out is just absolute gold for me. So, but they just they were talking. I don't know if they're quite Mount Rushmore yet, but you know, in a couple of years, yeah, they well, could be there. They could be there. You know, we can always do one on indie books. You know, hey, I, right? I'm, oh, I'm definitely in. <laughs> and you know, we could also do since since the mod since the the comic book eras are so ambiguous, almost. Yeah, we can almost make our own and modern sense. 2000 yeah. or something like that because then that changes the landscape dramatically yeah. um and it could be an it would be an almost entirely different list besides maybe tinyan really and Actually, hickman might might just be on the cusp there but but for the most part this, this list would be completely different speaking of modern age i did a video um i read this article where some you know to me the modern age has to change they have to have something yeah. after the modern age and it was on, uh, I think it was on Go Collect that I read it. Um, this one writer said there should be an Iron Age of comics, like right when the Iron Man movie came out. That would be a good starting point for um, doing something. That would be called the Iron Age of comics. Came out. Uh, about you know what? I like ago. that because that that did change everything. Yeah. Because once that it. was a a a, a uh, commercial success, everything changed. Changed. Yep. And and. and 
Marvel started putting more money back into the comics. Yeah, and exactly. Because I don't know, not everyone knows this, but Marvel almost died oh, in yeah. the 90s. That's why yeah. that, that's why Fox had the, the X-Men and yep. the Fantastic Four and Universal had the Hulk because yeah. they were like, someone please buy these from us. Yeah. Buy these rights so that we can survive. Yeah. And with the commercial success of Iron Man, I like I you know what? We may not have to we, let, let's just not even wait for like the, the conglomerate to decide its fate. Yeah. I think we as a community just adopt it and be like, well, yeah. that's what we're doing now. Too bad. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think because I like that. I like that a lot. Because it yeah. did change it changed everything. Yeah. So this has been so much fun. Just even me just talking to you again. It's been a, a while. It's been a year or so since we've actually yes. talked to each other. So but once again, uh, my name is Ephraim Passpoint Comics, and you are? Kyle from Nerd Tween and Marvel 2K21. I'm going to put all his links, like I said, in the description below. Until next time, everybody, be safe and take care. Bye.